Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be testing out some new ColourPop stuff that I recently purchased. I was so excited when Kathleen Lights announced that she made four pressed blushes with ColourPop, so I knew I wanted to try those out, but then the whole site had a 20% off sale. At the same time, Kathleen posted her ColourPop favorites, and it was just a bad combo for me. I ended up placing an order. I bought way more than I thought, but I'm actually really intrigued by a lot of these products that I picked up. Not all of them are necessarily new launches, it's just new to me, because ColourPop launches stuff like every single day. So I just went on there and I picked up just some things that I personally was interested in, and a couple of them are actually things that Kathleen recommended in her favorites video that I had never tried that looked very intriguing. So that's kind of like the baseline of this video. I also have a couple other things I want to share with you. I've been really enjoying the Glossier Brow Flick, so that's why my brows aren't on. I want to show you how I've been using that. Um, also, Juno & Co, the microfiber sponges. I was recently sent these by Juno & Co. I've heard so many good things about them, but I have not tried them yet. I've been waiting to try them on camera, so I felt like this would be a perfect opportunity to do so. So yeah, that's basically it. We're just gonna get right into it and create a fun look. There's a specific eyeshadow that I purchased that I'm really inspired by, and that's gonna be really the focal point of this whole look. So let's just get right into it. Starting with brows, I'm gonna go in with the new Glossier Brow Flick. Um, I have mine in the shade brown, and I've been really, really enjoying this and I'm gonna show you guys how I like to use it. So we're gonna do the brows first, and I really like to just take this and kind of angle it downward so that the product comes out a little bit easier. And I normally start right about here on the brow, and I just kind of create really nice hair-like strokes. And I like to use more of a light hand, and I just kind of build this up, starting from the inner portion, and then I move my way outward. I normally actually do the opposite. I normally go from the outside in with the brow. It doesn't really matter with this, but I have really been enjoying this I feel like the color matches me pretty well the one thing I feel like it's missing even though it is a brow pen is just like a spoolie I really feel like a spoolie really helps so I have to use just another spoolie that I own but I basically just keep layering this up until I get the intensity that I want and I make sure to use really light pressure in the center right here so that that area is a little bit lighter and then as you move across toward the end of the brow I like to build that up a little bit more so it's a little bit more dark but this does not budge. Once it is on, it stays on, which I really appreciate, especially with my brows. If you kind of like this more feathered out look for just the center of the brow, you could always mix this with like a brow pencil and use the brow pencil more on this portion of the brow and then just use this to create those hair-like strokes more toward the center. It is a little bit more time consuming for my brows. If you've already got full brows, you might only need a couple little hair strokes. But for me, it takes a little longer because I've got to kind of build up my whole brow. So I definitely wouldn't say I reach for this if I'm in a rush, but if I'm not and I really want my brows to look nice, I definitely reach for this. All right, so that's basically it for the brows for now. I usually go back in with the Glossier Boy Brow, which I will show you guys at the end of the look. But yeah, that's the Glossier Brow Flick. I think this comes in three shades. I wish that the shade range was expanded a little bit more because even though the undertone matches my brow hairs pretty nicely, I personally would like something slightly lighter than this and the light shade that they have is just too light for me. All right, let's go right into the eyes. I'm actually gonna be using the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer. This is a really good concealer for glam looks. Obviously, it's Charlotte Tilbury, so you know it is a little bit more of an investment, but I really do enjoy the formula of this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of this on the eyelids. And then I'm actually going to take my microfiber sponge and just kind of press this out. I'm not sure if I'll be able to tell exactly what this does just by patting out this concealer here, but it seemed to do a pretty good job. Next, I'm gonna take my Glossier Wouder, and I just wanna take a tiny bit of this powder to set down that concealer. So next we're gonna go into eyeshadow and I'm just gonna do colors that are kind of inspired by the eyeshadow that I'm gonna show you later. I kind of want to dip in between these two ColourPop palettes. I've got the Through My Eyes palette from I Love Sarai in ColourPop and then the Zodiac palette from Kathleen Lights in ColourPop. I want to use like pinks and purples and you'll see why when I show you the other shadow. So I'm gonna start off with the Through My Eyes palette and I'm gonna start by dipping into this shade right here called Nostalgia. I'm just gonna take a big fluffy brush and I'm gonna tap off the excess, and I really wanna start just buffing this in the crease and a little bit above, so I'm just gonna start to work this right here, and I'm just gonna keep layering this up, 
until it's the intensity that I want, but I'm really gonna make sure to blend and buff this out so it's as diffused as possible. Same thing on this eye. I'm just gonna keep blending these shadows out. I'm not too concerned about this area here because we can always clean it up with a makeup wipe since we're doing our eyes first. So I'm just really buffing it all over the eye area, but obviously mainly focusing it kind of towards the top in the crease and a little bit above. All right, next I'm gonna take a little bit of a smaller brush and dip into Misbehave, which is a really pretty cranberry shade. And I'm just gonna use this to start to deepen up the crease a little bit. So I'm gonna focus it kind of closer to the lower lash line on this outer corner first. And then as there's less product on the brush, I'm gonna buff that up toward the crease and inward a little bit, just to kind of add a little bit of definition on that outer corner of the eye. Okay, I really like those two colors together. I think I'm now gonna go into the eyeshadow that I've been mentioning. This is a Jelly Much eyeshadow. I only own one other Jelly Much eyeshadow from ColourPop, but I really, really enjoy the formula. I picked up the shade No Rest for the Vivid, and it is the most insane color. I will open it up and show you. Look at this, I'm so excited about it. It's just such a fun, bright, pinky blue color, and I'm just really thrilled to try it out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take some on a brush like this. Ooh, I'm excited. And let's go ahead and see how this looks. Ooh. <gasps> that is so cool. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna use my finger to kind of blend out the edges right here. But I went about two thirds of the way across the eye. Um, okay, wow, is that not incredible? I'm thrilled. This is so beautiful. I am so excited about this color. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other eye. Wow, I cannot get over how beautiful this is. This is not something that I would have picked up on my own, but Kathleen actually swatched this in her ColourPop favorites video. And as soon as I saw the swatch, I was like, why do I not own that? So I immediately purchased and I'm so happy. That is amazing. I'm just gonna kind of take the brush and really carve out these edges right here. I'm so in love with this color, you guys. I can't even, oh my gosh. <gasps> mm, that is so fun. I'm gonna make sure to put the cap back on the Jelly Much eyeshadows because I'm pretty sure they can dry out. I wanna make sure to have this one as long as possible. It's so pretty. Let's dip into the Zodiac palette. Oh no, I just scratched the Aquarius. But I really wanted to use this purple shade to kind of deepen up that outer corner a little bit more. Oh my gosh, I'm like ruining this palette. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the Sagittarius and I want to deepen up this outer portion a little bit more with this purple, just on this outer corner. And I am kind of blending it over top of the Jelly Much eyeshadow. I just feel like that helps complete the look when there's just a tad bit more depth on the outer corner. I can't get over that Jelly Much eyeshadow. Oh, it's so good. Wow, I really love this eye look so far. I'm actually gonna go right into a makeup wipe and I feel like it's time to clean up the edges. So I'm just gonna take this and make a nice line. There's actually not as much fallout as I was expecting. Honestly, I was expecting way more with that sparkly eyeshadow on the lid, but after it dried down, I don't think there's really any fallout, which is nice. I always like to take my finger and just kind of press out those edges just to make sure they're a little bit more soft so that it looks more diffused and ethereal versus a harsh line. I kind of want a little bit of eyeliner on this outer corner. I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay 24-7 Glitter Liner. Well, this is the pencil, but this one has glitter in it. This is in the shade Viper. And it's just a really pretty glittery dark purple, and I felt like this would be really nice just on this outer corner here to add a little bit more depth. So I'm kind of starting right above the pupil and then as I move toward the outer corner a little more I'm just gonna thicken up the line and that just adds a nice little subtle definition and when you get up close you can see the glitter and that's really pretty. I really like that. Since we've got glitter on the eyes I usually like to go ahead and apply top lash mascara so I'm gonna go in with the Nabla Major Pleasure Mascara. This has been a favorite of mine for a few weeks now ever since I tried this out I really really enjoyed it and I love how I can build it up to create a really huge lash look or you can kind of tone it down for every day Day. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply two coats to the top lashes. I'm really trying to build this up because I feel like it'll be a nice contrast against that really bright purple shadow. All right, so mascara is on. I'm gonna wait for some of these specks to dry before I try to dust them off. But now let's move into the face. This is something that I've been really into from Glossier. I actually didn't try it for a while. And then one day I just picked it up and started using it and I've been using it pretty much every day since. It's the Glossier Bubble Wrap Eye and Lip Plumping Cream. Here's what it looks like up close. It has like a metal bottle and then it's got a little pump on it. And I just take one little pump just like this and I will go ahead 
and kind of apply that underneath the eyes and all over the lips. So I just dot it and then take what's left and just apply it all over the lips. And I know it says that it's a plumping cream. I'm not sure if I've noticed like plumping over time, but what I do notice is when I'm prepping my skin for makeup, it really helps the under eye area look good. And it also helps my lips not feel so dry by the time it's time for lipstick. So I've really been enjoying it. I'm gonna have to continue using it to let you know if I really do see a difference as far as plumping goes. But for now, it just feels really nice and it's really nice under makeup as well. All right, we're gonna quickly do foundation and concealer. I'm gonna be using the Natasha Denona Transfer Matte Pore Vanishing Matte Foundation. I am gonna be using the shade 25NY. This is a really good foundation for glam looks, which is why I chose it for today. I might mix in a little bit of a lighter shade. I'm gonna put a little bit of the shade 5N on the back of my hand as well. And you guys probably know I normally go in with a brush first and then a sponge. Since we are trying out this Juno & Co sponge, I thought it'd be kind of fun to just try out the sponge. So I'm just gonna take this and just kind of dot it all over my face. And then I'm gonna take a little bit on to the sponge and let's see how this goes. I'm really curious to see if this is better than a beauty blender. Apparently you can use this wet or dry. I personally always use my sponges wet, so I did get this wet earlier. Okay, so it seems to be working pretty well. Obviously this is the first time I've used this and it's also been a while since I've used this foundation, so maybe I should have used a foundation that I've used more recently, but I didn't think it would really make too much of a difference. It definitely feels different than a beauty blender. I almost feel like I should have blended it out with a brush first because this foundation is just not quite spread spreading the way I wanted it to with that sponge. All right, so that's the foundation all over the face. I do feel like it looks pretty nice. I'm wondering if because it is a matte foundation with a microfiber sponge that it just didn't quite blend out like a more wet sponge would. Maybe it caused the foundation to dry a little bit faster. But regardless, the result is still pretty good. So we're just gonna continue and I'm gonna go ahead and use the concealer again. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. I do have two shades. I'm gonna be using the shade Fair 2 for under the eyes and then uh, fair three for the blemishes. We're gonna start with the blemishes, including my mosquito bite. I'm just gonna kind of dot that on any areas that I want a little more coverage. And actually, I'm just gonna use this same exact shade for under the eyes as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that underneath the eyes and a little bit down the center of the nose. All right, then we're gonna go back into the sponge and I'm just gonna go ahead and blend all of that out. With the concealer, however, I feel like the sponge is blending it out beautifully. So maybe it is just different with different products because this concealer is looking very, very nice. All right, so let's go ahead and set the face. I'm gonna go back into my Glossier Wouter and I'm just gonna take this on a small brush and press this under the eyes. I've absolutely loved this powder recently. I just love how lightweight it is and it also feels lightweight too, which is really nice. And then I'm gonna go in with my larger powder brush and I'm gonna use this to lock in the rest of the foundation all over the face. Have you guys seen those no brand tutorials where people go through and do a full tutorial without ever telling you what product they're using? I feel like that's a really fun idea. I first saw Mariah Leonard do that video and it's always intrigued me. Would you guys want a video like that? I just feel like it's kind of the same feeling as the full face of nothing new videos that I do where you can kind of take a break from new launches and with a no brand tutorial, it kind of makes you go look in your collection for a matte brown shadow instead of wanting like a new matte brown shadow. Does that make sense? Let me know if you guys would wanna see something like that because I have been really interested in doing a tutorial like that. I think it'd be kind of fun. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this Sephora Micro Smooth Powder in the shade Light. This is just a baked powder that is really supposed to help your complexion kind of come back to life. It's a little bit more of a luminous powder. I'm still testing it out. I haven't decided if I love it yet and I've been testing it out for quite some time, but I normally love these kinds of products. So I wanted to give it another go today. All right, let's go back to the eyes. I'm gonna go back into the shade Nostalgia and I'm gonna take this on a smaller pencil brush and just start to buff this along the lower lash line. And I'd like to make sure to connect the lower lash line with the top lash line. Right in this area here, I just feel like that helps everything look more complete once the mascara is all on. And then we're gonna go back into the Zodiac palette and we're gonna go into the Sagittarius again. And I'm just gonna take the very tip of that same brush and I really wanna focus this one right up against the lash line to really help define that a little bit more. And same thing, I'm dragging this out toward the outer 
outer corner just to connect everything. I also really wanna mix in a little bit of the Aquarius. I'm just gonna take it on that same brush and I just want a little bit of this shade along that lower lash line as well. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of this Jelly Mutt shadow along the lower lash line as well, just a tiny bit in that inner corner. So I'm just gonna take the same brush that we used on the top lid with just a little bit of that same shadow and I'm just going to start applying this along that lower lash line from the inner corner and I'm gonna run it about halfway across the lower lash line. Ooh, and with that periwinkle underneath, I feel like it kind of changed the color versus the top lid. That's really cool. I think that is so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love this eyeshadow already. I kind of want to pick up more Jelly Much eyeshadows. If you guys have a favorite shade in this, please let me know because I'm obsessed with how this looks on the eyes and you guys know how much I love glittery eyeshadow. So I'm really happy with all this. Kathleen also convinced me to buy a blue mascara. I've tried blue mascaras in the past. Um, the one I tried is from L'Oreal, but this one seemed very bright and fun and I really wanted to try it on the lower lash line. So this is the ColourPop BFF Volumizing Mascara and this is in the shade Blue You Mind. Ooh, look at this. This looks so fun. I'm very intrigued by it and I'm excited to apply it to the lower lashes. So that is what we're going to do. I'm just gonna apply this right on those lashes. Ooh, that looks cool. Wow, that is a very, very pigmented blue mascara. I really do like how it made my eyes look. It looks a little funny because we haven't finished up the complexion. So let's go ahead and do that. I found this in my stuff and it's been forever since I've used it. This is the Laura Mercier Bronze 01 Matte Radiance Baked Powder. It looks like this. And I just wanted to use this to warm up the complexion. It's a little bit more of a luminous baked formula, which I've actually been really into. The Honest Beauty products are both baked. I really like the uh, Flower Beauty bronzers as well. I don't know what it is about these baked formulas, but I'm into it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this to warm up the complexion. I like to build it up around the forehead and I like to get it in the hairline too, along the jawline and down the neck. And of course I use it to warm up the cheeks as well. It's been so long since I've used this. This is a really nice bronzer. Maybe I like the baked formula because I feel like you can't really go wrong and you can't really overdo it. They build up in layers, which is what I need when it comes to bronzers because I can tend to be pretty heavy handed. The more I add of this bronzer, like the better it looks. Really, really like this. All right, we're gonna use highlighter and I'm not gonna use my Honest Beauty one. I know I've used that so many times. I still love it, but I kind of wanted to bring back my Dior highlighting palette for this look just because there's this really pretty pink shade and I just feel like maybe incorporating that would be really nice. So I'm just gonna mix these two shades right here. I'm gonna take mostly the light lighter shade and I'm just going to apply this to the high points of the face. Ooh, look how pretty that is. I'm gonna take it around the brows and on the front of the cheeks and same thing on this side. I think it's really pretty with that pink mixed in there too. It kind of matches with the eyeshadow just subtly. It's not too crazy. I'm also gonna go down the center of the nose and on the cupid's bow. While I have this palette out, I'm actually gonna take the pink shade and I'm just gonna take that on a smaller brush because I think this shade would be absolutely gorgeous as the inner corner highlight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of pop that right here in the inner corner. Oh boy, was I right, look at that. Oh wow, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna blend it into this inner corner here and up into the top lid as well. And I'm just gonna take a little bit and kind of run it up the eyelid right here. I love doing that, especially with more sparkly looks like this. I don't know why, I just love it. And then I'm gonna dip into the white shade just to add a little bit more of a highlight right here in the very center. And then I'm gonna take what's left and apply it right underneath the brows. I love this eye look, oh my goodness. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for, the Kathleen Lights and ColourPop pressed blushes. So she launched four shades. I'm gonna swatch them all. I don't really know if I can wear all four shades with this look, so that's why I'm gonna swatch them. We're gonna start off with the shade My Sun and Stars. Ooh, this is like a peachy gold. Look at this color. Oh my gosh, look at the shift in that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and swatch this. And I'm gonna build it up quite a bit on the back of my hand so we can really see the difference in colors. Obviously, these are going to apply more sheer on the cheeks. So there's the first shade, My Sun and Stars. And I actually bought little cases for them. Instead of putting them in a Z palette, I just wanted to do this. So I'm gonna put them in the case as I use it. Next up we have Lunar Has It. That's a really cute name. Lunar Has It is almost like a bronzer. This is really fun, but I do really enjoy shades like this. One of my favorite blushes is Bare Minerals Beige for Days. And this one seems very similar to that. So I'll go ahead and build this up on the back of the hand. This definitely has a peachy undertone as I'm swatching it. There's that one right there. It's definitely gonna be a really nice 
kind of barely there blush. It's really pretty. So that is Lunar Has It. All right, next we're gonna be swatching So Retrograde. Ooh, this is a fun one. This is like a shimmery orangey kind of color. Ooh, I really like that. Let's go ahead and swatch this next to the others. Yes, this is definitely more of a brighter orange. I'd have to make sure to be very light-handed with this one on my skin tone. Ooh, that's pretty. That's a really cool blush. I don't think I own anything in that color. So again, that one is called So Retrograde. And then, last but not least, we have the shade I Need Space. Ooh, this looks really, really pretty. Ooh, this might be what I want to use. We might mix a couple. This just seems like the perfect kind of mauve color. Ooh, hoo, hoo, I really like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch this one. I'm gonna have to swatch it on the side of my hand. This has a little bit of a sheen to it. This is really pretty. It's not sparkly, but there's definitely a little bit of a glow. Can you see that? So again, that one is I Need Space, and I think I need space. This is really pretty. I think I'm gonna be using that one. I also do wanna try this one right here first. So maybe that's what we will do. All right, so first I am gonna go ahead and use this peachier beige color. Again, this is in the shade Lunar Has It. I'm just gonna take this on my blush brush, tap off the extra, and I'm just going to apply this kind of more toward the back of the cheeks. Ooh, okay, I really like that. It's just what I expected. It's a very subtle blush, but if you're somebody who doesn't really like blush, I think you would like something like this because it adds that color to your cheeks, but it's not gonna be like too pinky or anything like that. It kind of just adds life to the face without too much color. So I really like that one. And I am gonna go ahead and go into the more mauve color for this look. And again, this is in the shade I Need Space. And I'm gonna take this just on the same brush. I'm gonna tap off the extra and I'm gonna smile and apply that to the apples of the cheeks, kind of blending backward. Ooh, yeah, good choice. That was a good one for this look. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of drag that across the nose as well. That's a really nice blush. I really enjoyed both of those. I will definitely have to try out the other two shades in an upcoming video, but I do feel like those two blush shades really suited this look. So I'm really happy about that. I'm just taking my powder brush and kind of blending everything out, especially the bronzer and right underneath the cheeks here. And then, we are going to wipe off any foundation that got on the lips. And I actually picked up quite a few different lip products. I picked up two of the ColourPop Luxe lipsticks, but these ones are like the more matte blurring formula. I've never tried those. Um, I picked up the shade Mesmerize and Third Eye. I might use one of those. That might be pretty with this look. I also picked up a an ultra glossy lip in the shade Pretty In. And then I realized I did not own the ColourPop and Kathleen Lights lipsticks, Satin Lipstick in the shade Aquarius, and also the ultra glossy lip in the shade Aquarius. So I picked both of those up as well. I'm gonna hold up some of these colors to see which one we wanna end up with. Ooh, that could be kind of pretty. This is called Third Eye. I might just try this out. Hmm, ooh, that color is really nice. But is it the one? I don't know. We are going to wipe it off and try another one. Maybe this purpley one? This is in the shade Mesmerize. I don't know, let's just see. Hmm, pretty color, but it needs to be more subtle than that with this look, you know what I mean? Okay, let's see what the Aquarius Satin Lip would look like against this. Oh yeah, mm, mm hmm Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, that's the one. I'm just gonna take my finger to kind of press that into the lips. I love the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip Formula. I actually prefer it over the matte formula. It still dries down pretty well, but it just never leaves your lips feeling uncomfortable which I really like. And then it might be really pretty to add a tad bit of gloss and I think this pink gloss might be fun. Don't you think? Again, this is the ultra glossy lip in the shade Pretty In. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty. I'm just gonna make sure to blend those together with my finger. All right, let's assess the situation. I do want a tad bit more of this Laura Mercier bronzer. I must say, I feel like I have been sleeping on this bronzer because uh, it's amazing. I really don't remember liking it as much as I am right now. Maybe my tastes have changed a little bit when it comes to bronzers, but I'm thoroughly enjoying the shade and formula. So this is gonna stay on my desk. I'm just gonna take my brush and add just a tiny bit more of that highlight onto the cheeks. Um, I always love to use, where is it? My Ciate Glowy Sticks. Ah. Here it is, and I normally use my sponge. I guess we can try this microfiber sponge with it. I don't know, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this directly onto the sponge, and then I just kind of stamp it over the very high points of the face, just to add like dew, like a glossy, dewy finish right over the highlight, it's my favorite. And I actually don't think I've tried this with that Dior highlight, so, ah yes. 
Very pretty, I love this. I think everything else looks pretty good, so we're gonna go ahead and set the face. I actually wanted to try out this new Urban Decay Summer Solstice Scented Long Lasting All Nighter Setting Spray. Comes in this packaging, apparently it's a different scent, so we are gonna give it a whirl. I kinda like the packaging, it's really fun. Plus this is one of my all time favorite setting sprays. It's so good, it makes your makeup last all day. So we're gonna go ahead and spritz this. I do notice a different scent, but it's not too strong, which is nice. I'm just gonna take my fan and kind of dry that down, and then I'm gonna go in with my microfiber sponge and just kind of press everything down. I can't figure out what that smells like. It's not coconut, is it? All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of the Glossier Boy Brow to set the brows. This is just the clear one. I really like how this pairs with the Glossier Flick Pencil. It just adds to that featheriness. Normally I go in and mattify the T-zone, but since the foundation was very matte and I feel like the powder was pretty mattifying and then we applied the all-nighter setting spray, I'm just gonna leave it as is. So I think that completes this makeup look. <laughs> wow, I just really love the eyeshadow so much. Wow, I really, really, really like that. So yeah, really quickly, let's kind of go over everything. Obviously, um, the No Rest for the Vivid Jelly Much Eyeshadow, A plus for me, I really love this. There can be some fallout throughout the day with the Jelly Much eyeshadows, but you know what? It's worth it with this shade. I will definitely keep you guys posted. I'll leave a note in the description down below as far as fallout goes to let you know if there's a lot of glitter or not so much glitter on my face by the end of the day. So that's like my favorite thing so far. I actually love the blue mascara on the lower lash line with this kind of a look. I think it's so pretty. Um, um, the blushes that I tried, so far so good. I feel like I'm gonna definitely reach for several of these shades. I'm really excited to play around with the other two shades, but the shades that I wore today, I feel like those are the ones that I'm definitely gonna reach for most, just because, maybe this one as well, but I'm just not sure about this orangey color. I'm not sure how good it will look on my skin tone, but again, I haven't tried it yet, so I will definitely try those, but I always feel like Kathleen does an incredible job creating amazing shades, whether it's her eyeshadows or lipsticks or anything like that so I really do like all four shades I really like the two I tried today but again I'm gonna definitely try the other two and I'm excited about those uh, let's see what else do we use the Juno and Co sponge I felt like it was really nice I'm gonna have to keep playing with it. I don't know if it was the foundation that I used or what, but it didn't floor me immediately. I honestly was expecting to be floored immediately, but I'm just gonna keep playing with it. I'm gonna use it with different products. I'm gonna use it with more dewy foundations and kind of get back to you. I definitely feel like it applied my makeup nicely and the end result is really nice as well. It also blended out that concealer way better than the foundation. So again, I'm gonna have to get back to you guys on this, but I really like the idea. It's definitely different. I don't own a microfiber sponge, so I'm definitely gonna keep using this. And I know a lot of you guys have really enjoyed it plus it's very affordable which I really like I think all their sponges are around six dollars which is amazing so yeah I will keep you guys posted on that what else did we try the lip combo is really really beautiful I'm excited to play around with the other lip products that I bought but obviously I can't wear five different lip colors in one video so I'm really happy with that as well I'm happy with the whole look overall I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what your favorite ColourPop products are and if there's anything that you haven't ever seen me try that you absolutely love ColourPop is an amazing brand. I know it can get overwhelming with how much they launch, but really when it comes down to it, their stuff is really high quality. They have really fun colors. So I'm just a massive fan of the brand in general. And I'm really glad they made this eyeshadow because it is so good. If you're new here, hi, my name is Allie and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, but you wanna be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays when I upload, click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification every single time I post. I hope you guys have an amazing day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.